infinite complacency, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. here we find ourselves with another episode of Into the Fray. If you're new to the show, welcome. You can find everything ITF at intothefrayradio.com and on the usual socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Personal accounts, search Shannon Legro. ITF accounts, search Into the Fray. One of my guests this evening is Heather Moser, who is also a big part of On the Trail of UFOs Dark Sky, out now on all major VOD platforms, including Amazon. Please leave a review once finished. Heather is a research wizard and provides on-camera commentary throughout. Newest episode up for my Patreon members. It is titled The Undertaker. I interviewed a man with 30 plus years as a funeral director slash undertaker, and let me tell you, he has some really incredible and some, honestly, big no-list encounters he shared with me. You can gain instant access to this and all other bonus audio and video episodes by heading to patreon.com and searching into the fray. There are now five different pledge levels, and the bonus episodes are just the beginning. My patrons help tremendously to keep the ITF train chugging down those weird tracks. Again, patreon.com, search Into the Fray. Hello to new patrons, Carlos Soto, Johnny Knotts, Lena, Craig Chamberlain, Jeff Anderson, Colin Craggs, Randy, Stennis Nederlich, Wilda Herda, Matthew Lacewell, Vin Simentilli, Sue, Jimmy Woodard, Elise L., John R. Myers, Kang Ta, Brian Corbin, and Becky Blankenship. Welcome aboard, guys. And it is Alpha shout-out time. What is an Alpha? Alphas pledge $20 or more a month over at Patreon.com. Alphas are Anthony Mikulski, Azriel, Chad Irving, Andrew of Black Triangle Coffee, Eric Garcia, Crystal Bowman, Isis Fernandez, Karina, John, Nightwing, Randy, Salcedo Paranormal, Roy Daniel, Ted Cheever, Steve Alarcon, Josh Arthur, Chad Ralston, Jack Cavender, Richard Rose, Sean Kevin Jason, Tyler DeMoney, Stephen Bashore, Charles Mann, Sticky Sound Zine, and Matthew Lacewell. A huge thanks to all of my patrons for their support. Last but not least... Coming up on Saturday, October 9th in Logan, Utah at the Cache Valley Event Center. I will be hanging all day, saying hello, signing books, and then speaking that evening. Besides myself, we have Destination Mystery, John Olson, Annetta Bunce, Shane of Bear River Paranormal, and Kristen Clay, Director of Story Tours, right out of Ogden. This event runs from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. There will be exhibits, booths, food, and more. Tickets are only $8, and kids 10 and under are free. And there are even still some of the, what we have dubbed, golden tickets left at $65. That gets you lunch with the speakers, a swag bag, books, and more. Head to StrangerBridgerland.com and click on Bridgerland Para X. And without further ado, here is this week's episode. 
Yeah, so how to how to really introduce you two ladies properly. I mean, first, you're, of course, uh, friends of mine, but you're also both very accomplished uh, human beings. I have the ladies of the Caravan of Lore podcast on with me this evening to share a very personal experience that they both had. So, uh, Anne, you are a Reiki master a tarot reader, and dare I say, a very talented empath and sensitive person. You've been on End of the Fray before talking about your various experiences besides this one tonight. And of course, Heather Moser is not only one of my weird writers, the most prolific one, by the way, but also a narrator for Steve Stockton's 13 Past Midnight podcast and a researcher for Small Town Monsters. You do a ton of work for Small Town Monsters and also um, a lot of on-camera work lately with them, right, for the, uh, the the squad stuff that you guys do. What is the name of the para, what is that, um, the breakdown oh, yeah. situation you guys do? So there's... There's Paranormal Unexplained and then um, On the Trail of Hauntings for those people that are on Squad. Yeah. Although we're releasing stuff slowly onto free YouTube. Yeah, Yeah, the Squad stuff is awesome. So funny. Just even the trailers for it. uh, You guys have great rapport and chemistry and it shows because you guys are always laughing much like we were (laughs) before we officially started this. Uh, But y'all will never hear that. That is top secret. We'll never, ever see the light of day. (laughs) So, yes. Um, Anything else that I missed in the intro? Uh, Of course, uh, and you've got the KPNL radio, which uh, uh, ITF is a proud member of that. Uh, Did you want to speak about that a little bit? And, And please, before we get to anything Talk a little bit about Caravan of Lore, where people can find us. They can look it up while we start to chat and what you guys cover on that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see. KPNL Radio is a digital broadcasting station that plays paranormal podcasts after five with special programming on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, And then we're all over on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram under KPNL Radio. Same thing with the Caravan, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, just the Caravan or Caravan of Lore. And yeah, gosh, Heather has been amazing uh, with being able to have her on the Caravan and have her host it with me and the things that we've been able to talk about, the episodes that we've done, and just how, how we've gotten to know each other over the past year, and then being able to now come on your show with a joint experience like what we're going to be talking about. It's just been an incredible journey. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's also cool that we all knew each other separately for a while before Mm -hmm. now we're all together. It's, (laughs) it's neat how everything (laughs) has worked out, you know, synchronicity, if you will. I hate that word. I just put that out there. Uh, I I think I know why, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to say why, because we, (laughs) But I'm I'm picking up what you're laying down right there. So <laughs> what we are going to be talking about tonight, you guys hinted, it is a joint experience. What we're not going to do is disclose a location. Uh, did you want to say the state or maybe just a part of the country? Or are we just leaving that totally out of it? It was in Ohio. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. that's fair was, game. Uh, that's where it's staying. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Foothills. Of Appalachia. That's as far as it goes. Should we just jump in? Who wants to start? Is there any kind of setup needed for this? Or whichever one of you ladies wants to take the reins first, go right ahead. Uh, Well, I'll jump in. Uh, I was actually, I flew out there uh, for a trip to hang out with Heather. And uh, so we were staying together during this time. And night one because we love to do ghost stuff, right? She had been talking about all these haunted dolls. And in the beginning, you know, we both had our, our Roberts and our Lilies, and, and she had uh, a couple of these dolls from, um, isn't it the Blair Witch Caves? No, no, the Bell Witch Cave. Those are uh, or, yeah. dolls. But the other ones that I had are actually from eBay. Uh, Nico and the Raggedy Ann dolls from ebay they were you know one of those haunted ebay things that you look up for (laughs) 
dolls that have really cool backstories. But yes, I have the ones. There's two from the Bell Witch Cave as well that are porcelain. Right. And they were always uh, fascinating to me. And so she had done some experiments, you know, with the EMF readers and and everything. So that night when uh, I was hanging out with her, she brought her dolls. So we set things up uh, and she got on the Estes method. We had what a flashlight. We had the EMF reader. We had uh... cat balls. We had the cat balls. All right. And then there was a musical. <laughs> I'm not sure how the musical thing works. That was new for me. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, it's the uh, it's like a paranormal music box and it's triggered. It's got like 360 degrees around it. It can detect movement and then it'll light up and the music box will go off. Um, if anything breaks its its field that it can see. Mm, OK, OK. So that boy the first time that went off so we set the dolls up and I had put the cat balls in each of the dolls laps trying to think that okay well if this doll is wanting to communicate then they would light up their uh, cat ball that did not happen Um, however the flashlight that was placed in the middle of them did start to slowly like it flickered it would come on it go off and the music box also went off I don't know. Do you want to? Do, you, music do box, you want to speak more about that? Well, the music box was on the other side of the room. I, I put it up so that it wouldn't get triggered by our movement, and on a, a far enough away that it wasn't going to catch us because that's important to do. We also had the Mel meter and a K2 meter, and the Mel meter um, we just had it on the the EMF setting or the REM pod setting, mm-hmm. so um, it w- would light up different colors depending on how close something was in proximity to the antenna and um that would get triggered as well the k2 meter would get um triggered but and oh we also had that night vision camera set up oh right 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 and i have not reviewed that yet because i suck at reviewing footage after the fact (laughs) apparently Um, it's all good but yeah we had all of that going and started asking different questions yeah. And it, for me, being new to this, right, at least this part, it was so interesting when the flashlight would turn on, you'd ask a question and it would turn on for yes, or, you know, it would stay on. So you'd have to be like, you know, please turn it off. And it would. And that's been really fascinating to me is to actually see this equipment respond to what you're asking. And so Heather, she ended up getting on, um, is it the SB7? Yeah, it's the SB7. With noise-canceling headphones, or that, you know, are padded enough that you can't hear anybody talking on the outside. Mm Mm-hmm. Right, so you did the Estes method, and what was really interesting for me, so... So me being more of your your sensitive um, and and all of that, I I felt something. It was like whatever we were communicating with, whatever was there, or attached to one of the dolls, perhaps. I I wasn't really sure. It seemed old. It seemed attached to that area that we were in, uh, attached to the land. There was an image that popped in my head that uh, somebody else that was there with us, this person also saw that. Do you do you recall the voices that you heard come through? The voice. Uh, I don't remember all the voices. I remember at the end the sing song uh, thing. Right. If you're familiar with the Estes method, when uh, words are coming across the spirit box, it it sounds, in my experience anyway, it's different all the time. In Mm -hmm. one place, it can be mostly static and you'll get a few words. Other times, it's so many words and it's very difficult to pick up on any of them because there's too many coming at once. But at this particular time, there was a definite shift between whatever had been coming through to this. It, It was... When it would speak and the words would come through, they were in different, uh, like it was like a cadence. And I just remember sitting there and like, 
uh, bopping my head to it because it just seemed like it was pretty, I don't know, like it was singing and just dancing around. I just had this image in my head of, of something just kind of hopping from one foot to another, just playfully going. That's what I remember the most. Um, every once in a while, there might be some other voices that, that come through, but normally when I'm doing the SS method, and this is, um, I don't know how this works with other people who do the SS method, but I don't usually remember a lot when I'm done. Um, right. um, I just have to go off of what everybody else has said or listen, listen back because I'm just focused on repeating words and there's only, uh, certain, maybe certain things will stick with me, like the whole sing, sing song thing, right. uh, just because that was so unique, but in in general, I don't always remember stuff. I might remember one word or, or so, but that's about it. Well, ladies, what exactly is the Estes method for those that may not know? So the Estes method, um, <clears throat> so I've done it a couple different ways. The Estes method in general uh, is you use something like the a spirit box, SB7, or um, some people have SB11, which is a little bit bigger. Um, that's one way to do it. And that particular piece of equipment will scan through AM or FM frequencies, um, you can choose the rate and how quickly it scans through the frequencies. You can also have it either going through all of the radio stations forwards or backwards. <clears throat> and the idea is that a spirit could manipulate the uh, sound waves enough to pick out certain words, I guess, or say certain words. And that's what you're going to catch because it's going, when you get it to the right speed, it's going fast enough that you're not going to be picking up entire sentences or phrases just from random radio stations. So if you get a string of words together or some that really stick out, then, and you say that, that's, um, that could have some sort of relevance. Ideally mm. for this, for, well, for the S's method, you have headphones on and sometimes you could put a blindfold on. I normally just have my head down and don't worry about the blindfold. Cause I'm not, I can't see anyway if I don't have my glasses on cause I'm blind, but you're not hearing questions that the other people in the room are asking. You're just repeating words that you hear. And then if that is in response to something that was asked, then that's relevant. Otherwise, you know, it could just be a random word, but you can do that with the spirit box or there's another thing called the phasma box, which goes through internet radio stations. And that, that's actually something we didn't get to do when Anne was here but it's something that we've been testing out a little bit where we have two people doing the SS method at the same time in, in different areas. And one will use the Phasma box and one will use the um, Spirit box so that we're going through internet radio stations and like actual radio stations, um, the AM, FM frequencies, and then seeing if something aligns. And that's actually been very intriguing. But yeah, that's the SS method. You, but, Radio stations going super fast with your headphones on so you can't hear anybody, eyes closed, and then the rest of your team or whomever you're with are asking questions and then recording the answers that you get. So what was really interesting is the what she was saying. There was a lot of talk about it, there was like it was like there was a massacre, there was something that was taken from whatever being was coming through. Uh, there was the word ancient. And again, there there was just a lot about the land. So I was figuring that it had to do with, um, you know, the, the ancient culture, the, the Native Americans uh, in that area. So with that idea, and we had finished, we had finished doing that that day. And it was the third day. Uh, and actually the day before I was supposed to fly home that I had this grand idea to, uh, you know, let's go ghost hunting in the woods. <laughs> and uh, so we did. Uh, we got everything. Um, we got blankets. We got all the equipment and everything. And oh, we went out. Because that's important. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, we got on um, this vehicle that it was, you know, it was Heather and myself and another person that was there with us. And we drove to the this opening of a forest and the forest was surrounded by a, a big field. So we get out and Heather had asked me, well, how do you feel? You know, because she knows that I, I get feelings and stuff like that. And at the time, honestly, I felt fine. 
I, I totally felt fine. And one thing that I didn't really notice, see, here in Oregon, it's pretty quiet. You can go into the woods and it's pretty quiet. And I was really amazed that it is like a symphony out there. And it didn't register with me that when we were walking into the woods, that it was quiet. I remember hearing the crunching of leaves, but I don't really recall hearing the all the, you know, crickets and, and everything. So we set up the blankets. Mm-hmm. We even have cicadas going on right now, too. Right. Which right. And I don't recall hearing that. Special. Yeah. So we set up the blankets and then you put out. What did you put out? So I put out the um, I put out that music box, but I went deeper into the woods for that so that it wouldn't pick up on us. And then I had the Mel meter out as well, because but just with the REM pod function so that we could hear it if it were to go off. I think that's all that I put out a distance from us, actually, because I Mm -hmm. wanted to. Oh, in that there's a teddy bear that I have um, that will trigger and make a loud noise if it gets like physically moved. So I put all of those at a distance away from us that had the sound to carry if something were to set them off. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we all kind of, after that was set up, we just kind of sat on the blankets. Now, Heather was facing the opposite direction that I was facing. And I sat, I think I was only sitting down for a couple of minutes. And I thought that I heard something behind me off to my right. And it weirded me out because it sounded like a person walking. It was it was two two feet. This wasn't a bird or a rabbit or a deer or anything like that. But I, of course, just didn't want to be a wiener. <laughs> and so I didn't say anything. And I sit there. <laughs> no one wants and... to be the woods wiener. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I end up and I'm sitting there and I thought that I heard something else, but I just wasn't sure. And I'm like, you are doing this to yourself. So I stand up and I turn around. So now I'm facing the same way that Heather is facing. But this time I grab a flashlight because I'm I'm on edge. And I wasn't sure. If one of the things that I heard, I thought that there was a low growl sound, but there again, I was really chalking it up to my imagination. Well, I get the flashlight and I'm really drawn towards, you know, the way that I'm facing now, you know, this is over off to the right and I'm really drawn to this one side. So I turn the flashlight on. And I I don't know. <laughs> I I was standing there and I thought that I saw this outline, this shadowy figure where you can see the head and the shoulder and its arm is around the tree. And it's almost like that there are these two eye holes, <laughs> like it's just darkness where where the eyes are. But it's just out of reach of the flashlight. Like, just barely, barely illuminated. And and here again, here again, I'm like, no, I need my glasses. I have an overactive imagination. I am not seeing that. There's no way. There's no way. So I try to put the flashlight in different locations. And I did try to check over there again to see, like, okay, you know, if I see it again, it's just the trees and I'm being, you know, a scaredy cat, but I didn't see it again. <laughs> there, so while this is, ha- I just feel like it's necessary <laughs> to say that we go up there thinking that we're, you know, it's like a paranormal type thing. We're just, we're doing the, you know, ghost investigation. We're, we're looking for ghosts. It's going to be awesome. And so We head into the woods and uh, get everything set up. And Jen is sitting down. If she was, I don't even remember if she was sitting down, but I know she was up very quickly if she was sitting down with the flashlight scanning around, telling me, don't go in this direction more than like 10 feet, which was behind her at the time. You can't, don't go past that stump. 
behind me or whatever as I was placing the equipment. So I'm like, all right, fine. And I <laughs> went and put stuff elsewhere. And then uh, <laughs> she just kept scanning around. She did not let us know what she thought she saw either because <laughs> she didn't apparently want us to, to tease her or whatever, which we may not have. I can't guarantee it. I don't think we would have. But, yeah, don't make that guarantee. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but she's not telling us she's just scanning around and first the first flashlight she grabbed was actually the one that we use when we're communicating um like with the dolls the night before the mag light which is actually pretty crappy for um a bright light in the woods so I gave her the brighter flashlight which she thought was great because it lit up the woods like daytime (laughs) um and she's scanning around but the thing is is that as this is happening um we got into this area by getting on, uh, a, we rode a gator up there, okay? So, like, a four-wheeler sort of, but with two seats and a truck bed. And um, <clears throat> while we're up there, it sounded like something took the tailgate of this and just slammed it shut about as hard as it could. Um, cause I did, I was the one riding in the back of the gator as we drove up there and I did leave the gate open. I was positive that when we got there, as loud as it sounded, that that gate would be shut. But the weird thing is as loud as it was, and we all heard it, mm-hmm. the only person that was unnerved was Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently <laughs> yep. because she was already feeling or, you know, sensing stuff and then, and then eventually saw something. But uh, the other person and I were not concerned because, and, and I've thought about this a lot since then. I think it's basically because we were still in the mind of this is a, a paranormal investigation. Like this is a ghost right, hunt. Ghost. And yep. weird noises happen all the time. Whenever you're out at locations, um, you might hear door slam, you might hear stuff like that. And then nothing's ever there to be seen necessarily so yeah okay I just heard the side (laughs) of the gator get slammed pretty damn hard um uh yeah I'm not worried about it right but then uh and eventually I mean we weren't even in there not a half an hour and lady Lady Anne's like uh (laughs) we can't be in the woods anymore we need to leave we we, it, we can, we can, okay, we don't have to go home, but we got to get out of the woods. We need to at least yeah. stay in the field. And so uh, then we gathered stuff up, got back in the gator, backed out of the woods and went in the field and I'll, I'll let you go from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, yeah. And at one point when we were leaving, I remember saying that I felt like we were encroaching on, on territory, that, that we really didn't belong there. And it took a while for me to, Cause you guys were asking me like, are you okay? And I was just like, "Uh, yeah, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, no, no, I'm not. And, uh, so, (laughs) (laughs) so yeah, so yeah, we leave and, and I'm just like, I I just want to go to the field. I just want to be in the field. So we get there and we park and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay. (sighs) Oh, I feel better. This is going to be all right. (laughs) And so you got out. You put the uh, the blankets down. Yeah. And yeah. you've had this magnificent idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, God. Because, okay. All right. For anybody who's been investigating <laughs> somewhere, you know, buildings, buildings are cool. Woods are cool. An open field. I mean, come on. To me, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a paranormal investigation unless, I mean, maybe if you were on some battlefield or something, perhaps, but. Mm -hmm. This is just a hill as far as I know. And so I was like, all right, I know where we are, right? I know what this area has a reputation for. Um, How about, (laughs) how about I play the Ohio Howl? Let's just see what happens. That's my girl. (laughs) Yeah. Let's let's forgo this ghost thing right now because I'm not feeling it anymore. But if we're going to be here, let's play this Howl. And so I looked up the Ohio Howl and I played it. Um, and, um, you know, turn my, it was just my cell phone. It wasn't even that loud. I didn't have my speaker yet. And, um, turned the volume all the way up, cut my hand around it so that it would echo a little bit. Cause we were up on a hill and there's a valley and all of this played it. And, um, we heard a return howl. 
it was so bad. Yeah, did it copy it? Did it copy the the Ohio Howl, yes, or was it something it different? It, 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 it did. The Ohio Howl, and I lost my mind with excitement. <laughs> I was like, "Oh hell yes, <laughs> this is great!" And uh, Ian was like, "No." <laughs> oh, I was not ready for that. I mean, oh, let me tell you. Was it time I, for you to tell them what you had just seen and why you wanted to leave the other spot now? I, oh my gosh. Like, no, I, I didn't say anything. I, I was standing there and I was just in shock because I'm going, I've heard these howls before. I've heard people tell their stories before, and it's not that I didn't believe them. It's that I have never experienced it, and I really honestly thought I never would. Mm -hmm. So to hear this monstrous sound (laughs) coming out of the woods, I'm just like in denial, right? I'm freaked out. I'm in denial. And then I'm, and then in my head, I'm hearing all these stories like, oh, yeah, it flanked me or it bluff charged me or whatever. And I'm going, oh, my God, we're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and so we we get in, we get in the gator. We're not, we, and we, and we wait and it's still, it was, I don't know how long it did it for. But the thing that got me was it, it legitimately, I don't, I mean, it sounded like it ripped a tree out of the ground and smashed another tree with it. I mean, it was so loud. So much. And I was just like, go, go, I'm done, go. <laughs> well, when it, and the thing is, is the timing of that was unnerving because when we heard mm-hmm. that crack, um, what I also heard sitting in the back, because when, it, when the first howl started, I was just sitting on the sitting on the ground like playing this howl when that when that crack happened the part that because okay so the howl happened when the howl happened I was like all right I should probably get off the ground and put stuff in the back of the gator just in case so we can go quickly if we need to and I played the howl again and it wasn't long before that crack happened but when that crack happened there was also this and I I'm sure that there's a word for it that is escaping me but it's a sound that I've only heard before one time, um, and it was when I happened to scare a mother deer that had a baby that just had a, a little fawn, and she let out this, like, it was like a snort, like a, just to, I don't know if it was to alert the baby or to try to scare me away or what it was. It, it, it happened a few years ago, but it was like that, but louder, and it was not far away. <laughs> we had been loud enough that I was thinking there wouldn't be any deer near us anyway, because they're pretty skittish around here. But it, I guess it could have been a buck or something that made that noise. I, I doubt that there was a mother with a fawn because they, they would have, I'm sure that the mother would have kept the baby away as loud as we were being. But uh, we, is, the crack happened. We heard that like snort. And then even I was like, all right, we should probably leave. <laughs> um. <laughs> So we left and we came back to base camp, if you will, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> talked to someone else who was, was there waiting and explained what had happened. And then uh, Anne said she was just staying. She wasn't going yep. back. She's <laughs> like, you know, I always kind of thought, like, I, I never really doubted that something like that existed, but now I pretty much know. And that's good enough for me. I don't need yep. to go see it. I'm Where, good. On the other hand, I was like, we have to go back now. I'm going to go get my speaker so that I can amplify the howl. We are going back. <laughs> and then I spent another 10 minutes trying to convince one other person in our party there that we weren't going to get murdered because... <laughs> They were concerned that if we had annoyed something, like if there was a, a, a Sasquatch out there, that um, if it was annoyed and it was trying to scare us away, if we came back, that it wasn't going to just, I don't know, tear us apart. And Anne was like, well, yeah, I've heard about bluff charges and stuff. And then, of course, me wanting to get back out there, I'm like, yeah, but that's a bluff charge, right? That's like, right. Not, <laughs> it's a bluff. So... It's probably going to be okay. Let's go. (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> anyway, long story short, uh, Lady Anne stayed and I gathered the other two people that were here and we went back. Um, we tried a different technique this time. Instead of just going straight to the woods, <laughs> we went around the perimeter of the field and then slowed, like slowly went in. We'd go a few yards, stop, turn the gator off. I'd play the howl. And then the, one of the people that we were with would let out this whistle because there's a whistle that we've also heard um, accompanying these, these howls. The whistle would get returned. The howl also got returned at least once, but it came from a different direction over a different uh, ridge. So anyway, we, we, we would do this. We'd go so far, stop, play the howl, listen for something to come back, and we'd get closer. And We were edging our way to the woods where Anne made us leave <laughs> and where we had heard that <laughs> snort and the tree branch break and all of that. Or I don't know if it was a branch, but something break. And when we got to the, we got very close to the woods and we sat, we turned it, turned the gator off and we were discussing about what we were going to do next. Were we going to go into the woods? Cause there is a pathway. Were we going to go into it and see what happens or are we just going to go back? And after a few moments of talking about it, we decided we're going to go into the woods and see what happens. Now I'm in the back of the gator. So I felt like I was the most vulnerable to be snatched by something should something get upset, but I'm like, whatever, it's fine. Then we'll have proof, right? So let's go. We turn the gator on, and as soon as we inch forward, there was a crack. Like, I guess, I see, the thing is, is because I was in the back, I didn't hear it. But the two people that were in the front, who are much less scared, scaredy cat-like than I tend to be, both heard this snap enough that they put the gator in reverse and basically said, never mind, we're not doing this. Mm. We're definitely not wanted there. Because it was as soon as we had started forward that this crack happened loud enough that I saw these two grown men jump. Um, and they're like, never mind. And um, we had to back up. And then we went back. Uh, but it was the, the part that was most unnerving since I didn't hear it. And I'm thinking it's because I was in the back and between the engine starting of the gator and just my own excitement. I just didn't hear it. But based on their reaction, that's the part that made me a little unnerved was that I know both of them very well and the jumpiness just didn't match up for them. Uh, so I was like, all right, I guess we go back. There's been other things that have happened in that area since then, because I got very curious after Anne left and um, it involves like, leaving things to see if stuff would get rearranged or taken or whatever. And things have been moved and things have been taken and stuff has been left. And, uh, it's, it's actually pretty exciting for someone who's like, yeah, let's go to the woods at night and let's play some howls. I mean, from my perspective, it's exciting. I don't know if lady Anne would agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, would I, would I go back and do it again? Yeah. Yes-ish. I mean, we've kind of talked about it. We, we've kind of talked about it, and and there's definitely um, different ways that I would approach it uh, another time around. Um, <laughs> like with a bear I, suit and a couple of shotguns or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's... What's interesting to me is what happened when... Y you know, when you came back with everyone and mm -hmm. we decided because part of me was sitting there going, OK, so in the community, there's these two camps when it comes to Sasquatch. You've got the scientific side where it's it's a it's a primate or just an animal, you know, and then you've got the other camp that has, you know, the woo side. Right. Well, I had told Heather that on the night previous, I had seen this large white mist, which I thought was really weird. And I just wanted to, I didn't want to be outside anymore. <laughs> and so she told me that actually there are reports that talk about a white mist along with Sasquatch. So I thought, okay, well, why don't we try to do the Estes method? 
near base camp <laughs> and see if if because we were around it, right? Because we made some kind of contact, would we be able to speak to it here? Do you remember much when you weren't on the SS method? When I wasn't on the SS method and we had someone else on it, I remember right. most particularly an instance where um, as the person was under the Estes method, we were seeing movement. Of course, this is dark. I mean, it's like close to midnight, I would say, by this point. We were seeing movement. And after a while, when we're all seeing it, one of us would turn the flashlight on. The person who was under the Estes method had their back to the flashlight. So they weren't going to be seeing anything, obviously. Um, and their eyes were closed and all that, head down. And every time that flashlight would go on, they would respond through the S's method almost instantaneously, bright or too bright or whatever, as we were shining it into the trees where the movement was. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember the most from that night. Mm. Yeah. What? Yeah. And that was that was a big thing because there's there was this little area up on the ridge where you could see the tree branches come together. And there was moonlight coming through it. And I swear, I saw the same figure step out. And when when Heather was on the SS method, and, and the other person wasn't, and he was sitting next to me, I was like, I, I pointed up there, and he had seen it. And it legitimately looked like it was swaying back and forth. So... Which we hear a lot in Sasquatch reports, right? Right, right. And um, and some of the things that were coming through that was being talked about, oh, man. At one point, it was talking about how, you know, so there was a lot taken from them. And it said, at one point, we were worshipped. And now we are just myth. And that gave me chills when I heard that. Uh, and this um, stuff is coming through clear as a bell through the box. Yeah, yeah, that that part that was what Heather when Heather was on there, she had said that part. Yeah, there's the, for for those things which when phrases come through, I feel like sometimes I don't know. I can hear a bunch of words that come through sometimes, but unless it's very clear, I don't repeat it. Right. Um, so when I get a string of words, sometimes I feel like if it, in my head I'm like all right, if you really want me to say whatever that is, you need to say it again, is what I think in my head. Like <laughs> I, um, I caught that, sort of, but I, I don't know if that was just my head or whatever. Um, but when it comes to strings of words, I, I don't repeat them until it's clear. And Okay, and just to be clear about something, you turn yeah. a flashlight on, and you shine it into the woods, mm -hmm. and then the two words, too bright, comes through. Yeah, it yeah. happened twice. One time what? it was bright. Yeah, yeah and then the, and then other the time second it time bright. it was too bright. And that one, I wasn't the one on the box. That was our other friend who had his back to to the flashlight altogether. So he couldn't even, mm -hmm. even with eyes closed or whatever, he wasn't going to see that a light had come on. But we were all discussing, like whispering to each other, are you seeing that? Yeah, I'm seeing that. And then mm -hmm. flashlight would go on. and I mean, immediately. Oh, yeah. Uh, the guy on the Estes method, the one time he's he's like, he even said, all right, it's yelling at me. Yeah. Bright. Yeah. Too bright. Like it was upset. Mm -hmm. And then you turn it off and then it was fine. What sort of a voice, um, you know, on on the whole, and they can sometimes sound a little bit mm -hmm. different word to word, just slightly. Oh, yeah. Was it the same voice every time for the most part? So with the ones that were like phrases, um, that was usually, it seemed like the same voice. Uh, what I try to do whenever I'm the one on the Estes method is if there's something specific about the voice, I will denote that as I'm saying it, like, oh, super deep voice or creepy voice or sad voice or whatever. And if there's an intonation to it, I repeat it with that intonation. Because um, sometimes the voice that will come across or voices or whatever might have sarcasm almost, I guess is the best way to describe it. And so 
I just repeat it as I hear it. So normally, I, I mean, I can't like do voices, but I try to have the the tone as best I can when it comes to it. But yeah, normally when there's phrases coming across, it's not like you hear, or at least in my experience, it's not like I hear a bunch of different tones. Like uh, if it's a string of five words, it's not like one word is female sounding, one's male sounding, and they're different pitches. It's all one pitch and tone for so the most part. So between just going off these two then, so you've got the mm-hmm. bright or too bright, and then you've got we were worshipped mm-hmm. and now we are myth. Were those two different quote-unquote entities or whatever we want to label them? Well, I don't know because I didn't hear the bright too bright because that was uh, not me on the spirit box. But the one when I was on the spirit box, that was when the myth thing was coming up. And uh, that I remember bits and pieces of that whole thing where it was talking about myth. And I feel like that was the same line of discussion where it talked about things things being taken and people being hurt and something about something about the land being injured or something like that. And from what I recall, that was all a similar sounding voice that was coming through. Mm. And um, as far as like tone and um, sadness, I don't even recall anger coming through on that. But I can't, when, with some of that stuff, I can't remember it very clearly because I have so much concentration and just hearing it in the moment to repeat it. And they also had me under, I mean, I feel like I was under for a good while. You um, were. Which also makes it harder for me to recall things when it's, when it's done. You really were, um, you know, because it was fascinating because there was bits and pieces. So the two different experiences, the one that we started with, with uh the haunted dolls and then this one they ended up coming together because of everything that was being said so there was definitely something there that was there that other night as well and what was really interesting is it was almost like we were surrounded and we had asked you know how many of you are there and that was the strange part because the number was you know like like many, like thousands. And you could hear movement all around us, all around us. And I remember at one point it said, look up. And it said, that's me. Do you see me? Aren't I cute? It, and it was so strange because when that started to happen, everybody could feel the shift in, in energy. And then it was almost like whatever we were talking to before (sighs) backed out. And then we were back to this sing song entity that we had talked to. And it was, it was so different. And then it spoke about what we were just talking to. And it was saying something to the effect of they're slaves or don't even pay attention to them or anything. But what got me, was right before, oh my gosh. So it said something like breathe in. And I went to breathe in and I'm like, wait, no, I don't want to do that. And I, it just, it was just this instinct of, I don't want to do that. And then it said, smell that. And it said, breathe it in. It's all around you. And things just started to take a turn from there. And we ended up, um, I can't remember exactly what it was. I don't know if it was that that caused us to be done. I don't, do you remember? Well, uh, so I remember when that, that came back on because it's distinctive. That's something that of the times that I've done the Estes method, there's just a few that, that that have stuck with me as far as the way that they feel that are very, very distinct. Mm -hmm. And that one is extremely distinct because it, it's immediately like I personally don't necessarily feel anything while I'm doing it other than it's having fun is the feeling that I get. And it's Mm -hmm. uh, again, it had that sing song quality as the, as it was talking, like it was just bopping along or something. I could just, again, envisioning something just hopping from one foot to another and just so tickled with itself. But this time it was, so I felt like it was the same thing coming through because of that sing song quality. But the second night when we were doing it this last time, 
Um, it was a sing song quality and happy, but then it started to get almost snarky, like um, a little more mm-hmm. aggressive with its humor. And mm-hmm. if I am remembering correctly, I think what caused it all to end was that it actually had referenced something that was taken as a reference to the children. Oh, um, yeah. I do remember that. And at that point, Everybody was like, all right, we're done. What do you mean? Um, a reference to your children? You guys as kids? To, yeah, to, to my, to my child, to, to my daughters specifically. It made a reference that said something about, it said something about, I, uh, it's been noticing the bird and the butterfly, I think is what it said. Mm-hmm. That's and what it was. The, and the other person that was there, which my, my husband was there. <laughs> He's the one that was like, okay, we're done now because uh, our youngest child, we, we call her bird and our oldest has a thing for butterflies, oh which gosh. specifically since coming into this particular area, because it's, it's a new uh, place for us and so on, there's butterflies everywhere. And she has been talking nonstop about butterflies. And so when that came across, then he was like, okay, we're done. And then they pulled me out of it after that. So yeah, that was that was what did it. It was that whenever the sing song thing brought up our daughters, mm, the bird like, okay. and the butterfly. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, one thing too, Heather. I know what I saw in my head, and I know that mm-hmm. one of the other people in oh. the party. Yeah, <laughs> we had. So, I believe that you saw the same thing that I did. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about the insidious thing. <laughs> so <laughs> what, before we had relocated to this particular area, I had been having dreams about this place. And in one of the dreams, I was in the living room and like doing exercise with the, like on my yoga mat and whatever. And I looked out the window and there was this thing standing at the back sliding glass door. And it looked so distinctive at the time that I was like, wow. And I don't remember being scared of it, but just noticing that it was at the door and watching. I don't know. It was just, I don't always recall my dreams, but I recalled that. And so when Anne got here months later and we were talking about different things and she said she had seen something and she starts to describe it, I was like, you know what? I had a dream. (laughs) And there was this thing that at the time... When I had the dream, I just remembered how distinctive it was. It wasn't until later that I saw the movie Insidious. And the creature in Insidious is pretty much what it looked like in my dream. Because when I saw Insidious, I was like, oh, I've seen that before. And when she was describing it, apparently it looked very similar, whatever uh, what Anne had seen. I don't know. But I was when she started to describe it, I'm like, that sounds like the creature I saw. It kind of looks like the one from Insidious, right? And she was like, are you kidding me right now? That's, that's exactly what I thought I saw. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, no, it was definitely, it was definitely really freaky because I had seen it in my mind night number one. And then when we got into the woods, that is what I felt. That is what I saw in my mind. And I did not like, I did not like that at all, like at all. And so what I was so interested about, what, what shook me up, right, is when you put this all together, what does it mean? Were we, was there two different things possibly there? This, this entity, could it have just been that? Could it have been something that can shapeshift and present itself as a Sasquatch? Was there a Sasquatch there? But also this, like, there's so many questions. And, and, but it's so weird because things, it felt like there was two distinctly different energies there. And it's, so it's just, it's been hard for me to wrap my head around because I've just never encountered anything like this before. Yeah, and if it was just one thing, it it sure was 
playing tricks and games because it's saying things like, like you said, there was a shift and then it's saying things like, Oh, they're, they're slaves. Don't mind them. Don't pay any attention to them. Like that's, Mm -hmm. um, what the heck? We did get the word trickster at one point. Uh, this was on night one. We did get the word trickster. Jeez. That's a preview of what was to come, I guess. Huh? Okay. So Anne. Mm-hmm. Did you, in fact, then, are you saying that you actually did, do you feel like you did see whatever we're calling them, we can unpack that, try to unpack that later. Do you feel like mm-hmm. you actually did see a Sasquatch two different times in those woods? Or do you feel like it was, you know, maybe your mind overactive and you got all these other things going on? Can you kind of hone in on that a little bit better? Okay. If... If I wouldn't have been sitting there after we got back to base camp, right? And I saw what I saw step out there and swaying back and forth with the moonlight behind it, same shape. Somebody like to to have somebody else see that they're witnessing it at the same time that I am. So, So then I can't. As much as I would love to say, yeah, I just, you know, it's my overactive imagination. It would be a lot easier for me to say that. But somebody else saw it with me. So, and with it being the same shape, I I would have to probably say I, I do believe that I did see something twice that night. And it was the same figure. How tall do you think this thing was? Oh, man. I mean... I don't know, maybe eight, nine foot tall ish, Mm. maybe. Okay. Also in the beginning, when you guys first got out there, you mentioned that you were placing like, you've got the teddy bear and you put out the music box and the mel meter. All of these things are kind of scattered out in the woods, a certain distance away from you. Did you guys, in fact, or did Heather, did you go out there and grab those things at that? You know, when Anne was like, I'm done, I'm done, we need to go back to the field. Did you collect those things before you left that spot? Yeah, I did. Because I didn't know what was going to happen. I don't, I mean, I didn't want to lose my equipment. I also, at that point, wasn't scared or concerned because I was still in, all right, this is some sort of paranormal investigation mode. Um, so even with the loud noise that we heard, it sounded like the gator being beaten by something, uh, you know, smacked on the side of the tailgate slamming. I was still in my, all right, whatever, it's just making noises mode. And so I wasn't, I wasn't worried to go out and grab those things. I'm surprised that Anne let but you yeah, go. I, was, <laughs> I, I see her like, oh. get, like the, getting the Charlie oh. Chaplin cane <laughs> and just yanking you back, you know? It was yeah. tough. It was really tough. <laughs> I was sitting there waiting. I had the flashlight. I tried to have the flashlight on her because, yeah, I was I was definitely you know, nervous. And then the what? I, I think I think the phrase is that you don't have to be fast. You just have to be faster than your friends. So I think dude, you're not wrong that, about that. <laughs> that might have been also what Anne was thinking at the time. Like whatever, Heather's off in the woods. <laughs> Oh, yeah, go get your equipment. Yeah, you don't want to leave that out there. (laughs) Oh, man, no. Like, well, and here's the other thing, too. The person that we were with, he said something, and I was like, what? And he's like, nothing. We'll wait till we get out to the field. So I was like, okay. So as soon as we, yeah, yeah. so as soon as we get out there, and I'm like, all right, what? You know, because I'm just like, what now? And he had said that he could have sworn he saw something following us out when we drove out. Yeah. Well, he also said that he'd heard like whispers or something at one point shortly after we got out in the field. Yeah. Um, Which I did not hear, but Mm -hmm. it was enough to cause him to pause. And then I was like, you know what? If we're going to be out here in an open field, let's just change the the focus of what we're doing from ghost to bigfoot let's play this how let's see what happens yeah i I suppose once you get a return (laughs) classic ohio how it's time to go full bigfoot right um right except then the bigfoot are like 
well, we're going to make you reconsider everything that maybe you thought about Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's all about discovering things. So bring it, I guess. I don't <laughs> So, I mean, and, and I, this is probably more for the listeners than myself, but what did you ladies th- always think about Bigfoot? You know, what was your opinion on maybe, and we don't have to get into a, a long discussion of, of what, you know, this side or that side or, or what Bigfoot is or isn't, but just, you know, really quick, were you in flesh and blood or were you like, ah, I'm undecided even b- before this? What, where were you at? Oh, man. I, I wasn't. I mean, I, I was undecided because coming from a long line of rock hounders, and having family members say that they've had things thrown at them or hearing, so I didn't want to hear about it. To be a hundred percent honest, the reason why I never wanted or never listened or really got into the whole Sasquatch thing is because I didn't want to know. I go camping. I I would go rock hunting. I don't I don't want to sit there and have my reality <laughs> like I want to trawl a lot down the the river and be happy. I don't want to be afraid of a monster that's going to come out and eat me, you know? So I just put the blinders on and I didn't even want to think about it. How about you, Heather? Yeah. So I undecided, I guess, because I I known people who have had experiences where it's definitely, it seems no question that it's a flesh and blood creature that they've seen or smelled, heard, whatever. Um, or left physical tracks behind. But then I also know people who are very, they're very trustworthy. I mean, they don't, they don't make up stories. They're not the kind of people that would even just, they would hardly even want to discuss something like this. And their experience has been something that seems more paranormal where something does, they see this creature and then it dissolves into a mist, which as far as we know, that was my cat jinx. As far as we know. I was going to say, we got um, some serious, serious Estes stuff going on right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that's my black kitty. My black kitten jinx. <laughs> she just wants her moment. But, um, you know, hearing them talk about uh, what looked like a physical, physical creature then dissolving into mist makes it seem more paranormal. I, don't, I guess if I had to choose... Aside, I would have leaned more toward a physical creature that just maybe has abilities that we don't necessarily know yet or that we can't experience as humans because every every person that I've talked to at any length that's had more than necessary like more than one experience per se or live in an area where there's a lot of activity, there seems to be a pattern that almost suggests like migratory movement. Or um, there was a lot of activity until the oil wells started being dug, which makes me think it's more of an animal. So I guess I would lean more toward a physical creature, but also we don't have a body anywhere, right? So that also makes me not as worried about being out in the woods either, because if they were just aggressive all the time, then I would assume humans would have found them by now and have more definitive evidence. So I just can't see them as being overly aggressive all the time. But yeah, so undecided, I guess, but leaning more toward a physical creature. Because here, here's the problem, and here's where, because and to anybody listening, I, you know me, I don't like to hear the details. I didn't have any of the details until right now. Uh, this is a lot to unpack, and here's the problem. More than one of you saw this thing, and you saw it more than once. You physically saw this thing. You all heard this thing or these things, right? Uh, and then yeah. the the conundrum comes in where, okay, obviously you're essentially using a spirit box in the woods in the midst of Sasquatch activity. You are getting voices through said spirit box. And there is tie-ins with your initial ghost hunt which had Zippo to do with being in the damn woods. <laughs> I, I don't even know where to go right now. Right. Yeah. So are you both then kind of going, okay, <laughs> well, we might have felt that way before, but now we need to alter our thinking possibly a little bit in that this may not just be a flesh and blood terrestrial creature. Well... 
I think, I mean, maybe there is, maybe there is, is the flesh and blood Sasquatch, but at the same time, maybe there's something else, uh, more ancient that can shape shift. I mean, you know, that was one thing that was really interesting is through the spirit box. One thing that was talked about was these energy portals. And I had been recently doing some research. I did this after I got home and I found out that the Adena, that there is story that the Adena possibly had opened a portal that they never closed. So, I mean, who's to know? Maybe there, maybe it's both. Maybe there's something out there that can shape shift and, and pretend to be a Sasquatch. I mean... And and so essentially they were always that or they are just mimicking maybe, you know, actual Sasquatch that cannot mind speak and disappear into white mist. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe they're just imitating them. That's really screwed up. I'm sorry, but nobody <laughs> wants to be in the woods with stuff like this, right? Like you said, Anne, you're like, I just want to go goddamn rock hunting and camping and not yeah. be terrified I'm going to die. Um, wow, ladies, I, I was not expecting all this yeah. very, very interesting stuff. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not often super speechless. This one, I, the, it, there's just so many tendrils that go into everything else. Yeah. Would you would you go back to that spot? Well, uh, here, let me let me just say this. <laughs> it, okay. <laughs> if I was out there, Anne would go back. We yeah. would all go out together. You know, we, we would yeah. gang up on mm -hmm. her peer pressure and then probably regret <laughs> it because then she'd never talk to us again because we'd have an even more horrible experience and she'd be even more scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I would totally go. Uh, and and Heather and I have definitely talked about it because I have um I have a theory or an idea rather because one of the things too is that the men okay, there was men present there and there was the aggressive behavior out in the woods, right? Well, mm -hmm. when we had went back to base camp and when we were doing the Estes method, Heather was fine. Heather was able to be on there and everything was good. When one of the males from the party got on there, he ended up getting sick, really sick, a really bad headache. And then the other man also ended up getting a headache, but I was fine. Heather and I weren't touched that way. So I feel that if we went alone, as terrified <laughs> as I would be, <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that we would be more okay in that way than if we went out with men. Okay. All right. Maybe. However, as someone who has gone back since you left, I can say <laughs> right? that, that during the day, it's fine. At night, it's not. <laughs> Not that anything has happened. I think that part of it is just because of the experience that we had. But I've gone back at night by myself. And um, oh, hold on, is... what what are you doing going out there by yourself? Hey, man, I got work to do. I, I, I to figure out <laughs> that is that is against the the bro code, man. <laughs> Unless you're armed or something. Well, you need. <laughs> You know, you need to just get out here and come with me. That's that's how we solve this problem. That is very true. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. So you went back out there <laughs> by yourself. Yeah. I. It, it was not good. I because I was trying to um, actually like place recorders out to see if anything like audio recorders, and um, I was only able to psych myself up enough to go a few feet into the woods to put the recorder down before I left because. I just felt like I wasn't allowed in that area at night. During the day, I can be in there for hours because um, I've done that, and that's not a problem. Not not as if I haven't like necessarily felt like maybe there was something else there. It, it just doesn't bother me. But at night, it's almost like, no, this isn't your place. You need to leave. 
And so I haven't messed with it. We'll see. I plan on exploring more, not by myself, <laughs> I mean, in the coming days. So I guess we'll see what happens. Do you guys feel like this might be possibly some fay type activity? You know, there was there was uh, talk about possibly elemental stuff. <sighs> Which can be very nefarious, know. which sometimes you you shouldn't be messing with, right? Oh, well, Heather, you left the recorder out there. Was anything left on the recorder? <laughs> so uh, I just have one more because I left a couple recorders out in different areas. And there's only like a two-hour section that I have to go through yet. But in general, there's not a ton that came through except... The one that I think the most entertaining part is that you clearly hear something, walk over to the recorder, pick it up and start sniffing it and then put it back down. Oh. But to me, it sounds like, like I, I mean, maybe I'm overestimating what a Sasquatch sniffing something would sound like. It just sounds like something small picked it up and mm. started smelling it and fondling the <laughs> fondling it and then putting it back down. So I'm like, oh, maybe it's a raccoon or something. Yeah, there's been that. As far as other sounds... The only things that have been kind of weird is that the sounds like Anne was explaining about the cicadas and the peepers and the crickets and all of that, like just the normal noises of the woods change. Um, and I do not know enough about the local insect life to know if that's if that's a thing. I, um, mm -hmm. I don't really camp a lot or anything, so I don't know as the night goes on how much that changes. I mean, there's a clear, it, as you listen through the audio, there's a clear distinction when the morning starts and the birds start waking up. It sounds different. But as far as the night sounds go, there are moments where everything's really loud and then it kind of just goes super quiet. And then it's quiet for several minutes and then it gets really loud again. But in those quiet moments, I don't hear like howls or anything like that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I need to put it out or put more stuff out again another time. But we're actually in the middle of a bunch of rain right now, so I don't want to ruin the recorders either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I wonder if you went out there, uh, obviously during the day is more advantageous for taking photos, but, you know, sometimes you see photos that have these weird looking, I mean, I hate to use the word portals, but by God, I mean, they are a, a real thing. Uh, I just, I wonder what's kind of going on in that area and you said that one of the voices did mention uh, the land the land being injured or something like that so obviously you guys hit upon a spot that um has got something going on oh are there other reports of uh ufos or you know anything anything else in that area <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> There's um, some very famous reports that if I were to go into, we oh, know exactly where we are. Got you. Yes. So, yes, there are <laughs> UFO reports. Period. Yep. End of yeah. file. <laughs> got and, you. Okay. End of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff around here, which is part of the reason that I was like, let's play the Ohio How. Is see there, what um, is there, and you know, it's not exactly quite like Kentucky, but you're talking about, uh, you know, Ohio area, Appalachia, you've got uh, different kinds of rock formations and things that, you know, people postulate may hold energy or help to, you know, energize an area. Is there, and again, mm -hmm. not to give anything away, if it is, just say, zip it up, Shannon. But, you know, anything like that in that area as well. Yeah, so unfortunately, I know exactly what you're talking about. In this area, there are no, like, boulders or anything like that. Um, now, there is a cave not far away from here, which I have not visited yet, but there is a cave not far away from that area. And then there's also, oddly enough, I suppose, um, a cemetery that is from the early 1800s mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I've heard about different reports being around cem cemeteries for as far as Bigfoot sightings and stuff go. But yeah, other than that, there's natural springs in the area. There are creeks. And there are uh, remnants of uh, like Native American mounds and such. I mean, we're talking areas, which, and this isn't unheard of in, in that particular area either, that you're tilling a field and a bunch of arrowheads pop up 
as they're as they're tilling fields. So there's definitely Native American artifacts all throughout the area as well. And um, from what Ian and I learned on that particular trip, uh, apparently uh, not in that stretch of woods that we were in, but in one on the next hill over, there was rumor that there had been burial mounds. So we're not far away from something like that, or at least reported places like that. So essentially, it's it could be the perfect storm for energy or something to be interested in that area or be able to thrive in that area if they were uh, otherworldly and that's what they need, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All theories, of course, but uh, they are interesting ones. I know it, it, it very recently this happened, obviously, right? So we don't have a whole lot of takeaway mm-hmm. and it's not like we have any answers, but so far... What has been you ladies takeaway from this experience? (laughs) Well, that uh, I'm definitely making a a good move here. (laughs) That I definitely belong up in that area because I've chosen to, to, I'm actually moving to Ohio. So there, there's so much that exists in the world that you you just can't oh man it just I, I guess it just made me more open-minded and more of a a believer than I was before which I honestly didn't think would happen I thought you know well I've had so much happen in my life but no <laughs> this this really took the cake and and really um gosh it, it I feel like it set me on a, a much different path and than I was before. And so, yeah. Yeah. So as far as the way that I've seen things since then, um, I don't, I don't know how much has changed from the way that I already saw things other than, well, one excitement, like, Hey, for real stuff was happening and that's pretty cool. And to see everybody else uh, worked up about it, which makes me feel less insane, right? If everybody else is scared <laughs> or <laughs> heard the same thing or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, great. I'm not the only one seeing or hearing these things. But really, I haven't doubted this stuff. Um, and I'm not saying that I, I definitely don't think that Anne ever doubted any of this by any stretch. But as someone who loves to talk to people and hear stories and and the stories that I've heard, I can't doubt much of anything anymore. So I kind of just roll with whatever at this point, (laughs) whatever happens, like, oh, all right, great. That's, you know, another thing to add to, to another story that I've heard or, you know, just seeing how all of that can be also reflected in other stories that I, that I've heard or folklore um, or historical text or whatever, just to see these patterns and know that as regard, like as wild as some of this may sound, it's really not, it's really not. When you start looking into other stories, there are similarities all over the place. And to me, that's almost soothing if that makes any sense it's almost calming in a way. And it, and it also drives me to want to, to have more experiences so that I can understand things more because it just, if anything, it just drives in more, the more so the fact that I do not have any idea what is going on with some of this stuff. No clue. And that's pretty awesome. I think actually, <laughs> That really so, helps yeah, light the know. fire, doesn't it? When you when you're like, yeah. well, that just blew up everything that maybe I kind of <laughs> thought, you know, not that you knew anything. None of us do, and amen for saying right. that. But uh, yeah, yeah it kind of lights a fire under your ass. Uh, but I don't know if yeah. if Lady <laughs> Anne here would agree with the whole uh, soothing thing for right now. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what she said, I do agree with because if you have all these experiences alone, you are really going to sit there and wonder, am I insane? Do I, do, is there something wrong with me? So being able to have these experiences with other people is, is a gift. 
And then as you go through having more and more experiences, it kind of does bring things to light that, hey, this stuff is really real. And even though this is a new experience that blows your mind and makes you question everything, it also reinforces that the other stuff that you've experienced is also real, true, valid, whatever. I think uh, one of the other phrases that kind of got me that you you said came through when you were under Estes is, is the look up thing. And we can sit and dissect that mm-hmm. for another hour and a half, but you know, look up, aren't I cute? Is that, you know, a hint for, you know, seeing things in the sky or is look, well, you know, what is, what is the riddle with the look up thing? I wonder. Uh, at the time we took that as it was in the branches in the trees. Oh, it's literally just look up in the damn tree. Okay. Or there's that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah there was, okay. In that, in that Ooh. particular moment, there was a um, a pine tree oh. not far from where we were, and there was only one branch that was bouncing. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, that's creepy. I like that. <laughs> I like that so much. That's creepier. Yeah, oh, that's creepier. Oh, <laughs> God. Look up. Aren't I cute? You're like, no, no, I'm not looking up. Not looking up. And so there was a, a, a branch bouncing. Holy smokes. Yeah, just, it was... It was the lowest branch, I think. How high up was that? Branches. That branch, uh, I mean, it, it probably eight feet up, maybe. Um, <laughs> what the heck, dude? I would guess. And it was it was just bouncing. It was the only one moving. It's not like there aren't other branches that are somewhat mm-hmm. the same height, but uh, that was the only one that was moving and oh. the wind wasn't blowing or anything. Nothing else was moving. It can, would just be that branch. Can I just say, yeah. I love That's when also... it's not this deeper meaning. I love when it's literally, no, look up. I'm in the tree above your damn head. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Yeah. What were you going to say? Right. Well, I was just saying that's, that's whenever the, um, when the flashlight came on, that's why the, we turned the flashlight on as well because of the movement there. Oh. And uh, the flashlight came on, and that's whenever the other person was like, bright, too bright, as far as the Estes came across. That was all in the same moment of time. So, okay, so, so let me just point that out real quick, because yeah. the whole Estes thing is the person under has their back to the whole situation going on behind them. They can't see. They don't know what the hell's going on. They get their eyes closed. So for the them to say, on. yeah, so it's, for them to say bright, too bright, they cannot see the fact that you just turned the flashlight on, right? So right. that's right. the whole point of the thing. Because then you're like, mm-hmm. okay, well, that did not come from them. They are just relaying the message <laughs> from whatever is out here in the ether. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the whole reason we turn it on too, this well, in this situation where we were, the person that was under Estes had that literally had their back turned to not only the person with the flashlight, but the branch itself. Mm. So they wouldn't have seen, e- even if they had their eyes open, they would have had to physically turn around right. and then see the branch bouncing and the flashlight turn on or whatever, which they didn't. But the branch was moving and we were kind of whispering to each other, like, are you seeing that? Are you seeing that move? Yes. Yeah. I do. What is that? And then turning the flashlight on and the minute that the flashlight came on, then the friend that was under was like, right, mm. too bright. Yeah, soothing. Um, I don't know, Heather. You might be slightly more demented than me. I love you. Uh, that would have been, honestly, that would have been pretty creepy, though, uh, to be out there and, and all that is going on. Because it's really, uh, and not to sound melodramatic, but, you know, when you have a certain way of maybe thinking or wanting to think about something, having that, all of that happen it could be really paradigm shifting for one's beliefs or well, beliefs, a bad word, but, but for one's thoughts about a certain subject. Yeah. That, and that's true. I, I just, I don't know. There are certain things that in the different investigations that I've done and stuff, there are certain things that definitely will shake me. And for some reasons, others don't. And that's one of them that, I thought it was really awesome and I I just wanted more answers to it. Now the things that really freaked me out would be like when I've seen something that looks like it drops on all fours and crawls across the floor, that kind of stuff I'm out on. I don't need answers for that. Just keep (laughs) it away from me. Yeah. But 
with something like that, I'm like, oh, cool. Let's see what it is. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I, I, and I don't think, I don't think any differently of somebody who feels differently about that either, but certain things, certain things will trigger me and other ones. I'm just like, all right, let's go. Let's, I heard that. How let's go back out. Let's see what's up. Let's see if it can throw rocks at us. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I think, ladies? I think that we need to convince a certain someone that we need an on the trail of elementals, phase, shapeshifters, Bigfoot, all in one damn thing. I don't know. What do oh, you man. think? Oh, yes. man. I'm down. I want to be a part of that. I, I think that that should happen <clears throat> if we knew someone who could Oh, if only we knew some kind of a documentarian only. that would be interested in that sort of a thing. Um <laughs> I don't know. No, but know. We'll on, honestly, around. this is uh, <laughs> very unexpected. Uh, all the details of this are, I mean, even that whole thing with the Estes method, I didn't put together exactly. You know, I wasn't envisioning the, the person like kind of quote unquote under and all this other stuff and what that meant for yeah. for the goings on with what was coming through. So that that was kind of a light dawns on marble head moment. And I'm like, oh, crap. Um, That is kind of a cool awesome deal with that creepy too very creepy well anything else any final thoughts anything that i i missed before i have you guys plug everything that you need to no not not for me no i i think i put out there my thoughts of hey let's see what it is <laughs> unless it crawls <laughs> at me then no <laughs> I'm with you on that one. I'm completely with you on that one. Eight legs, four legs, get, get out of here right now. Mm -mm. Yep. That that in clowns, man. I want no part oh. of it. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All set. <laughs> so soothing their clowns are, yes. Um. All right, well, yeah, plug away, ladies. Let us know where to find you guys. Um. Yeah, so the caravan. You can uh, just search up the Caravan Library of Lore. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter and Instagram, and then KPNL Radio. Same thing, just kpnlradio-db.com, that's the website, and then again, we're on all the social medias. And if anybody wants to reach out to me, I am on Facebook under Anne Celine. So, everything that Lady Anne said. Also, any small town monster stuff, man, you need to check out on the trail of ufos the first uh season that was out and then also dark sky that just came out obviously so that you can see the amazing shannon legro but also uh if you get on small town monsters youtube you can see paranormal and explain you can catch me on there i've been on some episodes recently of monsteropolis and then if you join squad you can see me uh on on the trail of hauntings as well and there's going to be a lot more stuff coming out as well from uh, Small Town Monsters that I'll be involved in. Also, check out the Weird Writer blog. I am so far behind on that. I feel horrible. No. But there's going to be more coming. No. There's going to be more. You're I amazing. Promise. And when I, you are <laughs> prolific on the blog, uh, I don't care what you say, so don't even worry about that. <laughs> One other thing I'd like to throw out is that there's this amazing um, anthology that has been put out by um, the wonderful Spooky Eats called The Feminine Macabre. The second anthology just came out. The first one, however, I mean, you should buy the second one as well, but if you get the first one, you will catch uh, a piece that I wrote in there about the cursed objects related to the Bell Witch Cave specifically. But it's, it's a wonderful anthology. It is all female or female-identifying writers within the paranormal community that have submitted pieces and this is, it seems to be going to be an ongoing thing. So I'm sure we will see lots of amazing women involved in this moving forward, which is important to this community, I think. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on. It was, uh, it was a blast and extremely, extremely eye-opening. And by God, I really want to come out there and see this spot. Yes, please do. Mm. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah well and i mean that because i think that you know uh there are strength in numbers and maybe we do just need to leave the what, what was it earlier the woods wieners the literal woods wieners leave them back <laughs> we can go out and we're gonna have a great time heck yeah <laughs> I'm down. Yeah, Let's we don't. Do we it. don't need the happen. yeah the double dubs ruining our paranormal fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm using that term now. It's official. <laughs> hey, are we having Woods Wieners out with us today? Hell no. We want things to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm so and so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bar. Buddha says, forget it. That's not true. That's some of the story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. But well, nobody knows who that is. is because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real you, and that again leads us back to this question. Uh, who are you? That is the real you. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are.
train to read your newspaper and uh, so on. You are not the same person who uh, a little while ago left the platform. If you think you are, you are linking your moments up in the chain. And this is what binds you to the wheel of birth and death. But when you know that every moment in which you are is the only moment, this comes into Zen, a master will say to somebody, oh, get up and walk across the room. And he comes back and he says, where are your footprints? They've gone. So where are you? Who are you? When we are asked who we are, we usually give a kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight.